Hey guys, gameboy 3 d Hunt here once again, and today I am going to be doing a swap out of some components of this Dell XPS Gen 1. This has a 3.4 GHz Extreme Edition Pentium 4 and a ATI Radeon 9800. This XPS, not, not XPS, um, Inspiron 9100 has a Pentium 4 3.4 GHz um, Prescott. This is a Northwood. I'm going to be doing a comparison between the Northwood, Prescott, and Ex Extreme Edition. The other difference is that this has a um, Radeon 9700, this has a 9800, so I'm going to be swapping those two out. And then, finally, I'm going to load some form of Windows onto this and see what I can get done. The XPS has a busted screen, so yep. not much use I can get out of it there. And it also doesn't like to boot up very well. One thing I did like was that the battery holds a charge, which is, I think, more than can be said for the 9100. So I will also be salvaging that. This is the 95 watt hour one. They have a 98 watt hour version, but I don't think it has the subwoofer, so I don't know if I'll get into doing that just yet. And I've also noticed that this has some more memory than the 9100 that I've got right here. So I'm going to be printing out that memory as well. Alright, this is the 1 gig stick. And then this is a 256 meg stick. Yep. So total parts that are being sacrificed from the XPS go up there. And he included the hard drive caddy. Did he include the hard drive connector? He did. The caddy is completely ruined. But he did include the connector. Which means that my previous purchase of a connector is completely put to waste. Whatever, it was only a couple dollars, so I'm not going to complain too much. That's not going to go in very well. But yeah, you've already seen me disassemble the 9100, so I'm going to skip over me taking apart the XPS. So I'll get back to you when I'm about to take out the Pentium 4 Extreme Edition and the Radeon 9800. Alright, I'm just about to take out the 9800. One screw there. Another screw there. Another screw there. And the last screw. There's 9800. It wasn't really seated very well. I mean, I guess that's why it was showing red in the BIOS when I um, took it apart. Or, not take it apart. I um, booted it up. And I did manage to get it to the BIOS, and it was all red on an external screen. That's normally not a good sign, but since it was very loosely connected into here, I'm going to go with it wasn't seated correctly. Now we're taking out the Pentium 4.
and that should do it. Hmm, this seems to have like an extra shroud or something around it. It may have just unseated the whole processor itself. We shall see. Assuming I don't damage all the pins in the process. Yep. Processor is there. That's a very common thing with these older uh, Pentium 4 sockets. They don't like to stay in very well. There we go. Very carefully pry it off. And there's the Extreme Edition. Plop it down there. No longer need this entire chassis, really. And there's not really much I want of this entire system as it is right now. So, I guess, away you go. You have served your purpose. Alright, now, to get on to replacing at least the 9700 in this. So, see you then. Alright, I've gotten this far, and I want to show you that there's a much faster way of taking apart a 9100 or XPS Gen, um, Gen 1. Make sure you have the hinge screws undone. And... The Wi-Fi cable is undone as well. Detach the connector, and the screen pops off without you having to take the entire bezel apart. I wish I knew that sooner. But now the issue still comes up that we need to take apart at least this part here. all the things holding down the secondary bezel here will come undone. Well, not really secondary bezel, it's like an entire support frame almost. Undo these. And now we're ready to rock. And just like that, we're ready to take up the screwdriver and take out the GPU. I will leave the Prescott CPU inside for now. And I had the very fine comfort of knowing that I will, will either need to leave this completely apart like this so that I can easily trade out CPUs, or constantly take it apart to trade out the CPUs. Yeah, this video card is much better seated in. Mainly because I put it in like that. Alright, here's the 9800 GPU with 256 megabytes of RAM. It's a fly. And now we shall seat it in. Let's make sure it's all good and clean. It was already um, pretty clean, but just to be sure, might as well get the connector as well. And just like that, the GPU is in, and now I screwed in. 
Now, I will make sure that this GPU is in fact still alive right now by just putting the screen back up and connecting the cable and the power um, bar thing right here and make sure that it doesn't display red and artifacts because old AMD cards, especially if you overclock them like I suspect the person in the Gen 1 did because he had both a Pentium Extreme Edition and the 9800 which with that configuration would have cost over five thousand dollars back in the day so I suspect he would have taken full advantage of it here's the screen I can't seem to get that power connector in. Well, not power connector, the video connector for the screen. There we go. We don't need to plug into Wi Fi cables for this very short test. I do need the keyboard though. For those of you wondering, it is really not recommended to run a machine half taken apart. Alright, set is hot, just gotta plug it in. Hope, and then hope it doesn't explode on me. And then test the screen. Power up. Preparing to enter setup, it's not all red and destroyed. So I assume that this means that the GPU is good to go. Yep, you can see it's not all red and artifacty. And we have 256 megabytes of RAM. Yay! Alright, test done. Shut down. Actually, I could leave it like this while I install some version of Windows. But, I won't. I need to... Actually, it'll be fine like this to set up Windows. Even Windows 7 only requires 512 megabytes of RAM to completely install. So, let's take full advantage of the 512 megs of RAM in this. And use either one of these two adapters that I now have. I don't need any of the hard drive screws now. They could definitely use them in a future project. Alright, there we go. Okay, it's in. Alright, I will now get to installing some version of Windows if it's XP then hooray, it's XP. If it's 7, then hooray, it's 7. Either way, you will see this. In the next video, I will be testing out which CPU is the absolute best. The one that came out later, the Prescott, the one with the lower TDP, the Northwood, or the Almighty Extreme Edition. See you next time. Alright, so I've got Windows 7 on here. I'll turn it slightly so that you can see. And I'm testing out the old battery that this came with, the one that supposedly held no charge. And I'm finding that its maximum charge is the full 96, 95 watt hours and then some. It's at 96.82 watt hours, but it is charging at a rate of 0 watt hours. So. I guess that means I'm going to have to use this other one that was working. It shows a light there to show that it has a charge. And I'll see how much charge that has. 
But before I do that, I'm going to activate this really temporary version of Windows 7 with some hack key, um, key gen thing. It works temporarily. I don't need to use this um, setup for long. As you can probably hear, the hard drive is old and not very healthy. It's at 80 gig, and it's also, well, that makes it not very big. I wonder if why it's not loading is because the processor is too powerful and I need to put in the Northwood. That'll be a theory to test out. So, Windows Loader, I'm pretty sure. Anyone who's been at all familiar with computers knows what this is. And no, I do not do this for units that I sell. Because it is very temporary, only works until it gets to like a certain update. And then even then some. It might not even work after installing. So it's just a Windows loader. It's a very temporary thing to use. And you probably also caught that I'm using a Dell power adapter with a blue end. I'm actually using a 220 watt power adapter that I had on my M17XR2. The other thing is that um, this doesn't seem to have the right amperage. How many amps does the actual power adapter have? 7.7. Woo! Alright, while this restarts, I'm going to go and check another power adapter I have and see if that actually does anything. Actually, it's going to be shutting down, so I'll get right back to you. Alright, I've got the Monster Dell adapter. This is a 330 watt, and it's got 10.8 amps. It will not kill kill the computer, it will just take all the power that it needs and I did not use the right plug there, whatever. It can stay unplugged to cool itself down because it's one of those adapters that is always on and always stays hot for some stupid reason. Let's see if the charge light, let's see if the charge light stays stable. Nope, still blinking. Let's see what the windows manager thing in the corner says. Yeah, I have it all in a drawer right now. And what's going on now is that the memory is not working right. Like it says failures at some points. Windows still reads all 1.25 gigabytes, but it probably doesn't um, recognize its full speed and potential. So I will find out what's going on with that. I hope it's not in the one gig stick, because that's the one stick I actually need. If it is, then we'll... God dang it. I'll get right back to you. Alright, it's welcoming me in. There we go. I'm going to wait for the little thing up here to show me the charge rate, if it's got any, if not, then this battery is a dud. And if it is, then yay! Charge rate, zero watt hours. And this is just bringing back the removable disc that has the key gen on it. Eject. Safe of hardware. Thank you very much. I hope that wasn't anything important to throw back there. But if it was, I have tons of extra screws. So with this battery being no good, time to shut down once again and be right back with you. Okay, we're back. I now have the other battery installed. I will not show you my passcode. And now we wait for Windows to log me in again. And you can tell this time the battery light is solid green instead of blinking yellow. This battery's charge is at 
1.23 watt hours and it is charging at a rate of nearly 60 watt hours and that's good I have a working battery probably doesn't last long like probably 30 minutes at most so I'll see if I can get my hands on a 98 watt hour version and give you a battery test for that I don't know if you're even interested in this old piece of junk laptop but I don't want to know what the Pentium 4 could truly do so I will work on getting some programs installed like Windows Essentials and then a simple game to test the graphics card during all these tests and then sooner or later wow hang on hang on hang on I'm going back to that charging at 70 watt hours that's a pretty good charger right there probably being way too hot in here so I'll let it breathe a little bit Windows Live Essentials Download And this video is over This was just swapping out some parts From the XPS Gen 1 to the 98 to the 9100 in Sprout So yep, thanks Gameway Out, see you in the processor video